We give God all the glory. We give God all the glory. Amen. Amen. It's a new day. It is a new day. And the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Hallelujah. We give him Hallelujah. all the glory. Hallelujah. There is no praise. like you, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you. Praise Lord. Hallelujah. There is no like you, Lord. Thank Amen. you for bringing us here today, the last day in the month of May 2021. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us, protecting us. Lord, we give you all the praise. There Lord, Dr. Like Diary, you are welcome. God bless you. God oh, bless hi, you. Thank you for Pastor, how are God. you? God bless yes. you, Dr. Diary. Uh, amen. God bless you too. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. Happy Memorial Day. Amen. <laughs> And um, thank so you, have... Dr. Diary, for the beautiful oh, Pastor. Flower, <laughs> fruit, oh, fruit presentation. You. That was a huge surprise. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't, thank you, didn't you need for to your, do that. Well, it was for your prayers. Thank you so I much. I tell you, thank God, God thank God, and God, thank you. God bless you. God will honor you Amen. like you've honored me. It was, it, was, it, it was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> yeah, it's meant to be. <laughs> thank you so much. God bless you. Sure, sure. Thank Amen. you so much. Sure. God will continue to act into our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is a, it is a privilege. Okay, so we're waiting for others to join in. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome, Mr. Ella. And I want to guess the tie must be Mr. Javier. <laughs> <laughs> he is the one with uh, different names every every yes, month. Mr. Javier, that must be you. Tie. <laughs> oh. oh, tired one. Oh, okay. tired, oh, tired one. one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, he's tired. Oh, it's a long day. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. So, twenty six. Sister Ella, you are mightily blessed. Oh, thank you. Amen. <laughs> so, I think I think we should be able to start now. So that we, we finish in good time and prepare for the uh, Hosanna night. Amen. Uh, Prophet Gary, please uh, open for us the order of prayer. Oh, okay. Um, Lord God of Israel, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this memorial day. Uh, we give you honor. We worship you. Uh, we beg you, Lord, to... 
for your presence to fill this room as we study your word tonight um, to guide us, um, to guide the facilitator um, and all of us uh, so that um, whatever is done today or said in this meeting will be to your glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know today the temperatures were too high, but the Lord is good. So today we have a, a special topic. I know last uh, Monday we, we, we dealt uh, much on, uh, on uh, temptation. So we did the introduction, uh, what temptation is. We uh, looked at the uh, different natures of a Christian. Uh, and also we looked at the nature of temptation. So I think that was uh, well uh, discussed. And so today we are going to look at how do we fight temptation. How do we fight temptation? When you see um, that you know, title, fighting temptation, it means it's a battle. And it has to be fought. It's not just something you can wish away. The Bible says that even Jesus Christ was tempted after the 40 days and night of prayer and fasting. He came down the mountain, and the first thing uh, he made was the serpent himself uh, ready to tempt him. Because, um, you know, and I think that is supposed to teach us uh, many things as Christians, that uh, when you pray and fast, I know your expectations are too high and you believe in God for, um, you know, for, for great uh, breakthroughs. Usually, uh, I know most people go into prayer and fasting for breakthroughs. And then you come out and... Uh, Instead of seeing the breakthrough waiting for you at the entrance, you meet uh, the trial of a lifetime. And then you ask yourself questions. Oh, God, why? I think I, I've, I've starved. I haven't eaten in the, even, uh, even had even, uh, you know, a piece of bread for all these days. I've been waiting on you. So how comes I'm being tempted? And so Jesus' temptation was a, um, a lesson to us Christians that it's not about uh, uh, you coming out and meeting your breakthrough, but about you coming out and being able to even fight further, to be able to fight the temptation when it comes, to be able to fight the challenge which you've been going through, that you had to pray for breakthrough. And we don't just fight for breakthroughs. At times we, I mean, we don't, we don't just uh, fast for breakthroughs. At times we fast to wait upon God, to have that good time with God, to hear from God. So it depends with what, why you are praying and fasting. But today, <laughs> we're going to explore further uh, on this uh, battle called temptation. How, how do we fight it? How do we fight it? And so uh, by says that in the hour of temptation, something, something very significant takes place within us. You know, there's something that happens in that hour you come across the, that uh, temptation. There's something which takes place within you and uh, something very decisive in its, in its importance, something vital to our whole being. So the hours of temptation are brief, but fought with destiny and filled with eternal import. The cost of our life, not only the temporal, but the eternal as well is determined in this fleeting moment. So that moment you come through that temptation, Hesby says, it is a short moment, but the decisions you make may determine which route you're, gonna, you're going to go. The decisions you make may determine the answers to your destiny. It might lead you to your destiny or lead you to your downfall. That temptation moment, he says, may be very brief, but requires decisive, uh, you know, it requires soul searching, it requires, it, 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 it sends you into that thinking mode. You have to think real quick and act quick, but then if you think real quick and act quickly, and yet you have no point of reference, that's when you may end up making a mistake in the time of temptation. And so as we saw as Christians, the nature of a Christian, we are guided by the word of God. We have a point of reference. Even when a temptation comes your way, it might come at that moment when you, you have no answers to your, even to your own, to your own problems. 
Is that time when someone asks you, so what are you going to do about it? And you tell him, I even don't know. I don't have no answers to this, to this issue. I don't know what to do. But as a Christian, now we're being reminded that we have a point of reference. And so that moment of temptation might be brief, but it's quite important. And we see in Ephesians 6, 12, if we can read that, that uh, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. According to Ephesians 6, 12, whom are we fighting? Whom are we fighting against? If you can read Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 6, 12. And, and then I want us to participate and uh, have a, a lively discussion like last Monday. Feel free to discuss. Feel free to uh, bring in a, a, a verse and uh, let's uh, look at, at it and share. So Ephesians chapter 3, chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Amen. So, so, so what, what, what do we learn, what, what do we see in that, in that scripture? That our, our warfare, you know, Paul is describing the warfare. What, what do we see that from, uh, from this Christian point of view, from the Christian perspective, what do we see in that, in that verse? What do we learn from that verse? I think we can. Uh, are you saying something? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Rhonda. Um, we're fighting against the spiritual forces of evil, right? Mm -hmm. In the heaven. Isn't that the battle? Yeah, that, that's, that's the battle. The forces, you're not fighting a carnal warfare. It's not about flesh and blood. It's so a spiritual warfare. So, so how, do we want, how, do we, how are we supposed to, to, to fight it? Or how are we supposed to face it? With the word of God. And do you have any reference? Anyone want to share the reference sure. that uh, ha can help us fight that battle using the word of God? Because remember, Jesus... When he was tempted, he was quoting the Bible. I mean, he was quoting the, 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 the scriptures, which were actually uh, the word of God, which was already spoken in the, in the days of Moses. He quoted uh, Deuteronomy 8, 8, 13, and he quoted uh, Deuteronomy 6. And he said, it is written, men cannot live by bread alone. You know? So what verse do you, can, you, can you use as a Christian? Now, today we are, we are discussing freely. So what verse comes to you? When you 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 you, you meet a battle as a Christian, what verses do you use? Just share with us your, your personal verse. What comes to you? What scripture? Feel free to share any scripture from the Bible that that anyone can use because we are learning. And I might also use that that, that scripture next time to fight my battle. <laughs> what scriptures do you have? Share your, your personal scriptures. Mine is uh, greater is He that is in me than He that is in this world. Amen. Amen. Do you know where we find that one? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I can get memorized here on the tablet of my heart, but I just don't know the address to it. Amen. Amen. What other? Uh, John, what other? In John, I know that. A a amen. What? What other scripture? Um. That that scripture is in First John chapter four, verse four. There it is. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. What other scriptures do we have? Share, share your personal scriptures. Okay. Well, uh, for me, I kind of love a uh, second Timothy. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy, I think is one seven or so. Um, That's because not giving I, you a spirit of fear? Fear, yes. Mm -hmm. For that of uh, love, power, power, love, and of a sound mind. Uh, because sometimes I tend to to be to show fear, mm -hmm. fear of the unknown, um, especially after I have organized everything. Because I'm a thinker, I love to organize. I love things to to be perfect to some extent. But if there's a deviation, I tend to be say, "Oh my God!" You know, 
Um, so I rely on that verse to remind myself. And you know, going to church too is, is helpful uh, because you can sometimes I go and the word of God will just come directly and, mm -hmm. and it addresses my fears. Um, you know, fear of okay, what would happen in the next if I've said this to happen in six months and uh, everything I did plan, you know, did not work out. Who knows what, you know, what will the next strategy be? So I think um, I resort to that Bible verse to, to tackle that human, um, that issue as a human being that I have to show fears as to I've done everything I could. How come this is not coming out as perfect as I'm thinking? So um, yeah, I use that Bible verse uh, to Amen. encourage myself. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. That is, uh, thanks so much for sharing that. And that's why, you know, we need to have these scriptures, you know, you, and uh, if you have these scriptures in you, in, in you, if the word of God is in you, you'll never, <clears throat> you never come to a point where you, uh, where you, you, you face a, a situation and you don't know what, how to, how to respond to it. Because these scriptures will, will give you the assurance that you're not alone in this battle. And that's why we see in the, I know we read Ephesians 6 and verse 12, but if you read, if you go back uh, on verse 11, you know, it says, put on the full armor of God. You have to put on the full armor of God. And uh, I know we've been, we've looked at the full armor and we need to take some time and, and uh, study what are the full armors of God, you know. And you know, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the Bible says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. There's a promise there. So what promise do you see in that scripture? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There's, there's a promise in that scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. If you can open it and then read. Maybe you can read another version. Well, I think it tells us that the faithfulness of God um, mm -hmm. doesn't change, it's constant. So that's Amen. good to know. Mm -hmm. um, do you still need me to read it? Uh, which version do you have? Uh, I think this is the King James Version. Okay. Anyone with uh, ESV or NIV? Okay, so I, I think I have I have ESV. Some some of these some of these uh, words need to be simplified even right, for our right. for our for our <laughs> hearing, because I, I know at times when uh, people see thou and 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 that and all that it, it becomes a bit uh, you know confusing to the ear. But uh, ESV says, "No temptation has overtaken you that." No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So there's a promise there that God will provide a way out of that temptation. You know, he'll provide the way out of that temptation. And that is very, very important. Let's open uh, our Bibles, the book of Hebrews 4, and read verse 15 and 16. Where? Hebrews 4. Yes, please. What did you say? Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. It says, For we have not... Right? Hebrews 15, 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Yeah, it says, For we have not an eye priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but, what, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16. 
says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Amen. So what do we see there concerning temptation in that verse uh, 15? What do you see concerning temptation and Jesus? Because, you know, um, there are people who, who believe that now that you are in, you're in Christ, you don't, you know, you're not tempted. You know, everything for you is just, uh, uh, you know, bread and butter. You wake up in the morning, you speak in tongues, you walk in the spirit, you come back in the evening, you, you pray, you read your word and you go to bed. So there's no, there's no room for temptation. I, I, I heard a brother say, when do you get tempted? You know, stay in the word, <laughs> stay in the spirit. But you see, Jesus Christ was tempted. So what do we see in that, in that verse? That uh, there's something, there's something, there's something very important to, to, to get from that verse, in verse 15. It's, it's telling us that no matter what, we have a feelings. And our feelings, he said, which cannot be touched with the feelings of, of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin mm. so our priest which is jesus christ for we have not an eye priest which cannot be touched so our eye priest which is jesus christ is saying that even he himself too can be tempted so, so living in the spirit, I will really still be tempted. If you live in the spirit, you are a tongue-speaking yes, sister, tongue-speaking yes. brother. You walk on the road, you are speaking in tongues. You drive, you are speaking in tongues. Can you still be tempted? <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so th this tells us as Christians, we should not be ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. In fact, remember in the story of Job, the Bible says, that when the sons of God went before the Lord, that the enemy himself came with them and invited. He went with these sons of God before the Lord. And his only mission was to try and cause confusion on both sides. You know, he wanted to go to see what these people are getting, receiving from the Lord. He goes and then he says, I've, I've seen Job, is, you know, he loves you because you put a hedge around him. Now, when he was allowed, to go and cause all these troubles in the life in the life of Job, it means the enemy can be set loose to come and tempt you, to come and, and play, you know, without touching your life. God says he'll make a way of escape. Yes, but now, when do you know it is the enemy who has been released to come and bring the challenges of Job into your life, or when you know, do you know it is your own mistakes, or it is the issues of life? So how would you separate all these battles? Because I know at times you get to that point, you hey pastor, I, I'm done, I'm done. I don't want church. I don't want anybody to call me. I, I want to stay by myself. So what what happens? What, what happens to us as Christians? What what pushes you to that to that level? I'm opening this room for discussion. What pushes people to that level? Frustration, and we've allowed the enemy to penetrate to us. We enemy has blocked our vision, not allowing us to see beyond that, okay, knowing fully well that that's no matter what, what the enemy has done and what he's doing, that God, he said he will not put something that you cannot, he won't be able to, to undo. He will not put things that is too much for you on your table. So we've allowed the enemy to block us and to push up to that wall to be able to say, you know what, I am done. And we are not even seeing, and we are not like one of one of the ministers said something today. I was listening to him. He said, sometimes we not, we are forgetting to undo the issue with the devil. But we are we talk, okay, knowing that the devil is the problem, but we are not handling the problem with the devil. Well, now we are cutting off the 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 the, um, 
the, the trees instead of cutting it from the from the foundation instead of completely weeding it out so the enemy has pretty much blocked us made us be frustrated and that is why we are not we say okay i'm done i don't want to have anything to do with you you know we should be very very careful because i know the holy spirit is still there which definitely still speak to us telling us that you know what i am still god give me a chance to come to in and settle this thing until then you just leave you praise the lord Hallelujah. could i add something yes please lovely um, I feel like some people would stop being Christians because the, some people sometimes blame God for every inconvenience in their life. They blame God. Mm-hmm. Yes, and so in they, fact, like Lovely is saying, remember the, the time when, when Job's friends, they came to see Job. Instead of looking at Job and even praying for him, they were tongue-tied and began to blame Job and also wondering what's happening between Job and God. And that can be very frustrating as a Christian, when even those you're relying on, they look at you um, like you are, you, are, you, are, you are guilty as charged, you know, through your temptation. And there's something I, I, I heard today, uh, a, a believer, you know, put on Facebook and uh, complaining about uh, how at times people in church, you know, they hurt others and, uh, and God will, will pay them and all that. So when it comes to that frustration, where, when, what, what should we do as Christians? When you, you come, to that, come to that level, when you understand that something is happening and uh, this is truly, you know, the temptation and, and the number of things are happening. What do you do as a Christian? Do you cry foul? Do you go on Facebook Live and begin to blame the church and, and, the, and the leaders? Do you blame brothers and sisters? What, what, what do you do? Because it's part of the process. It's part of the process. Which one? Can you say something? Yeah, um, with the passage that we read in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15, say, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted and yet without sin. So we have an high priest that understands what we are passing through. He has been there in the flesh. He came in the flesh. You know, the son of God, he came. So he has been tempted in all ways. So he understand that um, we, we are passing through temptation and whatever we are passing through. But he said that let us come boldly. You know, we understand as sometimes we get frustrated with the situation, mm-hmm. whatever we, we are being tempted of and all that. But yet, since we know we are, have an high priest that already been there so and he said my grace is sufficient for you he said let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need so meaning we have an high priest that passed through all those then we come to him he understands he knows uh, what we have been through because he has been there so we come boldly to him to ask for grace to be able to pass through those difficult times, I mean, temptation, whatever we have to pass through at that time. So the grace of God, like you said, my grace is sufficient for you. So the grace of God will carry us through. Amen. By, uh, by God's mercy. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So uh, in addition to... Okay. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. In addition to what Sister Kanji said about grace, absolutely, grace is, uh, is key. Um, I think that we can do a combination of things too. Um, Grace will enable us to stay calm. Grace will enable us to rely on the word of God to say, okay, and God will always put that word in your heart to say, do this or send someone who can, or, you know, um, I've noticed that that happens, that uh, God just does it in a miraculous way of giving you a word or sending you somewhere or someone, you know, getting a phone call. But I think that grace that Sister Kanju referred to will enable us to look in words too, to say, what am I doing right? What do, you, do I need to do differently? Because that is important. Because if we focus our energy looking at other people, 
you know, accusing someone else. It might be that someone else played a part, but we can't control that. We want to be able to turn the mirror and look at ourselves as, okay, what did I do to contribute to this? What can I change? Uh, what can I do differently? And then confession is good too, because sometimes we err. We can say, Lord, uh, forgive me, I've done this or that and that, and looking at ways of changing. Because as a human being, we have to have an openness to examining ourselves and our actions from time to time and knowing that we can change because that helps us to grow. Um, you know, it could be that um, an enemy or someone else had done something um, not nice to us, but we have to be able to rise above it. We have to be able to know what we can do differently or find someone we can talk to. We're not talking to any and any person. You want to, in the house of God that you go to, you have a pastor, you have, you know, you have to be able to talk to someone that you can share open communication with. You can say, okay, this is the exact situation because in going to talk to someone, we had better be sure that we're given the person because in order for someone to guide us appropriately, mm -hmm. the person has to know what is actually going on. Uh, this is what I'm experiencing. This had gone wrong and all that. And um, God can also um, touch someone else to give you the right advice or to work with you on how to deal with the issue. So God's grace can, can extend to several layers, you know. So that grace is, uh, uh, you know, is uh, something to rely on. Amen. God's grace. Minister Abir, I see your hand is raised. <clears throat> um, the question you asked was what draws, what pulls, what makes a Christian walk away? Mm -hmm. um, to me, one of the things right now could be because we're supposed to have patience and long suffering. Mm -hmm. And one of the things right now is not too many people have patience nowadays. Every, we live in a world where everything needs to be instantaneous. I want it right now. If I want this, I type it in my phone and it's on the way. If I want this, I type it in my phone and it's, it's pulled right up. I can get the instant gratification. I can get instant answers. Um, God doesn't always work that way. God doesn't give it to you right away. You know, there's times where you have to go through the storm because there's something that he needs to, you to see in order for you to gain what it is that, you know, he has for you or what it is that you're asking for. And we have to be a part of that. Like the sister said earlier, you got to you got to push that devil away. There's things that you need to do. You know, it's not just, OK, I asked for it. It's coming. You mm -hmm. also have to realize the situation that you're in and remove yourself from that situation or figure out how to block that situation out you asked earlier what uh verses work for us mm -hmm. uh my verses are 27 you know uh 91 you know psalms 91 psalms 27 these are these are things that remind me that no matter what comes against me god is always going to be there but i have to have patience i have to have faith i have mm -hmm. to know that you know it, it there's going to be trials there's going to be storms there's going to be temptations because these these psalms don't say if they say when the attacks come mm -hmm. they're gonna and that's where my patience and long suffering comes in as a newborn christian or even as an older christian mm -hmm. you know and, and once i started losing that that's what pulls me away like lovely said too you know people saying things will pull you away like mommy said frustration anger those things will pull you away and that all comes with patience and not waiting not wanting to wait for me from my understanding and you know, I I always go back to those scriptures. My my, we started off talking about Ephesians, you know, and the whole armor of God. Um, that's always been where my mind goes to when I'm thinking of God, where yeah. the trial that I go through, it's a constant battle. Powers, uh, principalities, you know, the rulers of this world. These things are coming regardless of the peace that we're having from Christ from God mm -hmm. you have to be aware that you see them but you have to be aware of them and that's where the armor of God comes into play you know there's different there's different things of it you know you have the breastplate you got the you gird your loins you have the shield you have the helmet you know, walk in the gospel there's there's a lot to it and and what those are one that's one of the best books I mean Galatians uh Ephesians these books speak to me James 
these are the books that I rely on. These psalms mm-hmm. that I mentioned earlier, these are the things that are around. These help me stay in the church. I may not always be present. You may not always see me. And you may like, you know, where's he at? You know, why is he always playing? You know, uh, why is he always grumpy? You know, he's always at work. He's always tired. But my mm-hmm. mind is always and knowing that he's given me a second chance, knowing that his grace is controlling everything. It ain't me, it's all him. You know, I shouldn't even be here. I shouldn't even be, you know, able to speak right now. But because he said, no, I want you to come to me and I need you to do this, 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 and this. And I'm going to erase everything from your past. And I love him for that. I praise Amen. him for that because it's all him. And so what, one of the things that I, that, you know, cause here I go long winded again, that's what happens when I'm tired. You know, that's why I don't like talking when I'm tired. I get long winded, but patience and long suffering is what I feel needs. We need to have more of, so we don't fall away. Amen. And, and that's why, uh, you know, if you read James chapter 1, uh, 2 to 4, which is part of our today's lesson, uh, it will say, is, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. You'll need patience to be, to be joyful when things are not working right. You'll need the grace of God to, to make you patient, to make you uh, calm down. That grace is, I mean, will, will play a very key role in how you, 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 you respond even to issues, in how you address issues, that grace will be very, very sufficient. And uh, Dr. Derry talked about uh, confession, which is very key because, uh, you know, as you said, we all uh, make mistakes here and there. We, you know, the Bible says, for we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But even during the t- time of temptation, when you are tempted and you end up uh, committing that uh, sin uh, and I, I shall give very simple examples because we are most now we know we are holy we speak in tongues so we don't want to say we, we are tempted and I, I usually use the very simple scene of uh, 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 example of when you you are driving and you, you know you want to make a phone call and uh, you want to text that traffic light and the phone asks you are you driving and you say no so you, you know it starts from that when your conscience tells you to tell the phone you're not driving because the phone has no, you're not answerable to the phone. So you might think that is not a lie, but it's a lie. There's no small lie, there's no big lie. You know, telling telling your phone you're not driving and the phone knows you're driving. That's why it is gone to the driving mode. So we start from those small things that we call, uh, this, is a, this is a small thing now. It's not a small thing, it is sin. You're lying already, you're lying even to yourself. You're lying to your, lying to your conscience. That you, and you know, you're not supposed to text when you're driving. But you see a Christian, are you driving? The phone says, are you driving? You say, no. And you start te- texting. And you're, so you're actually risking your life. So there are some of the things that uh, we, you, we overlook. And that's why it is important before you go before the Lord that we examine ourselves. We examine ourselves. There are things you might even have been part of in terms of hearing, which is not even supposed to be heard by you. There are things you might have been, in, you know, uh, encountered even in seeing and you saw sin or even speaking and you spoke sin and you thought you're just speaking out your mind. I'm not speaking out my mind. You know, I like speaking out my mind. Me, I can't keep things. I have, I'm, I'm principled. And even being principled, you're speaking out your mind. You are actually speaking sin. So we, we have to examine ourselves to, to that extent. Um, you, can, you can imagine if everybody spoke out his mind or her mind. It would be a mad, a mad world. But uh, when you, you try to speak out your mind and you, you, you are not sure what you said, if it is sinful before God, it's, just, it's good to examine yourself and go before the Lord and, and ask forgiveness. And that brings us to the next, uh, st- uh, you know, um, our next se- uh, segment of, of, the, of today's uh, lessons, which is about forgiveness and a few questions as well that follows. And this is, uh, you know, temptation. It can gain victory over you so easily so easily it can gain victory over you if you do not turn to the lord at once you know how people backslide completely is because they end up in sin or commit sin and it becomes uh, you know and then you do it every day little by little it becomes you become now you become used to it 
you know, just like we are, we are used to lying to the phone and to ourselves. So you, it becomes it becomes part of it. You don't see it as sin anymore because now you you are so you are so you are, you know I mean you are you are, you are allergic to change. It's, it, this is part of me. It's in my in the system. I'll just you don't even wait for it to ask you. you just can't say no. It, I'm not. So the thing is, we have to always be alert and return to God. And that is why the life of a Christian, like we saw in the previous uh, uh, lesson last Monday, the nature of a Christian is one that seeks for the Lord throughout. The nature of a Christian requires us to seek for the Lord all the time. You know, we cannot say, oh, I, I was saved in 1969 and I've been working with the Lord since then. I, I know our, our, our elders say that in the village. You know, I was born on 1960, 1969. I was going, I was on the road at this hour at 6 p.m. So they stick on that day though they got saved, they gave their life to Christ. But every single day, it is important. I remember uh, a personal uh, testimony from my, my grandfather who used to have three, he used to pray four times in a day, four or five times in a day, him and his wife, who are very elderly. And uh, he, he was my, my, my grandfather's last born brother. And whenever you go there, if it is a time for prayer, they'll stop everything and you'll be part of the prayer. And the first thing they used to say in that prayer, in fact, the first thing they would, they would do is to first give a testimony of how the, the, the first few hours of the day were. So you'd hear my grandfather or my grandmother say, I woke up in the morning today and I felt so tired, and I think the devil was trying to discourage me, so I had to repent. So they'll be repenting the whole day, like four, four, five times, four, five times in the day. And then at, at one, then again, it's time for prayer. And then they said again, you know, since morning, I've done A, A, B, C, D, and then I had my breakfast, I had my lunch, and I thought I'm, I'm overeating, so I feel like I was sinning. So may God forgive me if that, so they'll, they'll, they'll make sure they want to put things. That is the desire of a Christian. That is how, you know, it's not that they were, uh, you know, you may say this was too much, but you can tell the desire. You can tell the, you know, the, where their heart is. They feel like they just want to do what is right before God. And these were very elderly people. They died in their hundreds, very elderly people. But it, it, it is a lesson I learned from them that every single minute examine yourself. Just like Dr. Dari, Dari said, let's examine ourselves. It is very, <laughs> very important. You know, I, I, I remember, I, this is a, by the way, I, I, I introduced my, my, my wife to them when I was we were still uh, courting. I took her to them and she found them giving those testimonies. <laughs> so you have to sit down and then first you repent. So, so everyone has to go around. It go, you go around. You know, everybody has to repent. So I was like, now what do I repent? What do I say? <laughs> Hallelujah. Those are by the way. So according to 1 John 1, 5 to 10, let's read that scripture. You know, forgiveness is very important. Forgiveness does not just uh, give you peace if you believe you've been forgiven. The amount of peace that comes into your heart is just, you know, you can't describe it. Let's read First John chapter 1, verse 5 to 10. We need to ask for forgiveness. We need to ask for forgiveness when we sin. And this is why I give the stories because it's not about when we sin. We always need to go back to the Lord. That is very important. So if you have First John chapter 5, verse 10, please feel free to read. Then... This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. No, that God uh, first John, first John. Yeah, that's first John, verse five. one, five to yeah. ten. Yeah, that's one, correct. Verse five, ten. Okay, okay. Mm. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we state that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one, one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, 
and the truth is not in us. If we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. Wow. So what, what, what do we get from that message? Anyone who can see uh, there's there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's, a, there's an emphasis there. There's something that Don is trying to make us. He is repeating it again, but in different ways. I don't know if you can see it. Well, I, I think that um, John is trying to tell us that confession should be a key part of our prayer regimen. Before you ask, you know, I show that that we should, uh, from my um, perspective, uh, mm. we should uh, ask for forgiveness, acknowledging and having the knowledge that we are human and we sin, so we can't claim to be righteous. Amen. And he says, "Walk in the light." If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Walk in the light. Uh, Minister Javier, I see your hand. Uh, it's just like the doctor just said, it's acknowledgement. Mm. It's recognizing that, yes, we just sinned, you know, mm. and not continuing to walk to do it. If we're walking in the light, and I know that's what you're getting at right now, if we're walking in the light, then that means we're walking, we're trying to walk as Jesus. We're mm. walking in his, we're walking in his, his love, we're walking through with his commandments, we're walking in his instructions, and of course, in his grace. So mm -hmm. if I flip to the temptation and I sin, I immediately recognize it. There's no way that you can say that you don't recognize it because you know the thought is already going through your head. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I just did that. I shouldn't have did it. Forgive me, Father. Please have mercy upon me because I acknowledge it. I saw it. And that's part of the self-examination that she was talking about earlier as well. If mm -hmm. I'm constantly paying attention to what I'm doing because I'm trying to walk in that line, and I'm going to see that immediately. And that's where I ask forgiveness. Forgive me, Father, because I slipped. Help me back do that. Amen. 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 So uh, what about, what about uh, the issues of, of denying we have not sinned? You know, you want to, 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 to live in denial. Well, I'm not a sinner. I'm not, I, I don't sin. I've never sinned, you know. So he says, if you do that, then you make God a liar. Mm. That's why it is important to examine yourself. Some of the things you may not know, you actually know when you examine yourself prayerfully and the Lord will show you that this is not what I wanted you to do or this was not the right thing. Because you, you, your point of reference is, is actually his word. And when you pray, uh, when you, you pray and uh, you know, when you examine yourself prayerfully, the Spirit of God will speak to you through that word, and that will open up your, your understanding even further. We, we all remember the story of the prodigal son. And remember when the son came back, that is in Luke 15, uh, verse 11, 32. But you remember when, when, the, when, the, when the son came back, you know, and, and, and the, the, the brother who had remained with the father was not happy that his... his uh, his prodigal brother was coming back home. So he was angry with him. But his father came out and then treated him. And then verse 29, the Bible says, but he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a, a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened cow for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this, your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Wow. So why, why do you think his father responded that way to the prodigal son? I mean, concerning the prodigal son. Why do you think he, uh, he, 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 he okay, go ahead. I think the father responded that way because um, he's a child that has been lost mm -hmm. and now was found. 
So there's cause for celebration compared to the old child that has always been in the house and always obeying the father. You know, though it looks like now that the, the, the prodigal son was found, you kill a, a calf and merry celebration for him. And the older son that has been, you know, all this wiping with the father, you know, as always doing the will of the father was not, uh, you know, in any way disobedient. Mm -hmm. None of those was done to him. He, he naturally looks like, oh, um, <laughs> I should be also rewarded for being obedient and all that. But the way the father sees it is, um, what if the child has not even come back in the first place? But the grace of God found him back. So there's every cause to celebrate the child, uh, the prodigal son from coming back. And the, the older one is always there with the father. He said he has the last verse, one of the verses, you always have everything I have. Mm -hmm. So there's cause for celebration. But what but, but concerning, concerning us Christians, what do we learn from that? The importance of, of, of going back, the importance of repentance, the importance of confession. What do we see there? Um, I think that, you know, when I, when I look at my Bible, it says the parable of the lost son. I think that it should say the parable of the lost Christian. Um, <laughs> and I really honestly believe that this is like a metaphor, you know, for a Christian who, um, who leaves Christ and goes out into the world and does worldly things. And then at some point they realize, oh, I can't do this on my own. So I need to go home. So they come back to whatever church family, um, um, wherever they go, and they come back and it's like, um, they have that, they're reconnected with God. And he's like, welcome home. You know, I'm glad you came to your senses. You were out there in the world. Now you can come back home and I'm still going to be here and I'm still going to love you. Wow. Amen. Savier, I see your hand. Well said, babe. I just want to add to that that um he was okay, so so the son that was there, so this is the way I've always interpreted it. The son that was there was doing everything that he was supposed to do. He was side by side with the father the entire time. He was safe the entire time. He was watched over the entire time. And the father told him, Everything here is yours. Everything that I have is yours. The mm -hmm. son of God was gone into the world. Father didn't know where he was, didn't know what he was doing, but he knew that he was in danger because he was no longer under his father's protection. He was no longer within his father's sight because he had crossed, he had left. Like God says, you know, he has nothing to do with sin. So when we go into sin and we're out there in the world and we're doing all these things that we're not supposed to be doing, God knows we're out there. And it's not until that we decide to come back and call back out to him that he can hear us again and bring us back in. Well, no, he can only hear us. Um, but when he, when that son came home, like Ella said, is he realizes like, you know what, this is not what it's about. Mm. You know, I'm, here, I'm out here doing bad. I'm out here, you know, sleeping with pigs. I'm out here doing, you know, all kinds of things that, that just, you know, and, and you get to thinking, like, right? you know what? My father has all these blessings for me. My father has all this love for me. He has all these mansions with many rooms. One of those is mine. And I'm out here sleeping in a sty. It's time to go home. I need to get back over there where I know I'm loved. Here. They just want to use me for one thing or another. They want my money. They want this, they want that, whatever it is. You know, they thrive on my strength. You know, that, that's really not mine. It's all from God. So as he walked back home and his father seen him, he's like, first, you got to think, I think of it as a dad. You know, like if my daughter or, or Zeppi or one of the kids came back after just being out there, it's like, why? Safe. Man, get, go get, go pull out that pot roast. Pull out the ribs, pull out the chicken, pull out them hamburgers, pull all that out, get all that food. We're gonna have to call Pastor Kimmy, make some puff up, get this thing going, and he's home. You know? And it's like overwhelming joy. Overwhelming joy. Love. 
it's like man. man he's home and then all of a sudden you got all these other you got the son the brother's like wait a minute because he doesn't get it he don't get it he was lost and now he's found he's lost and and, and so that's safe. that's how that's how some Christians behave when 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 uh, someone is restored and again we, we feel jealous right yes because they see they see that they come back that they've been doing everything right and it's like well how did how did that happen to to him you know how did he get that how did you how did you how did, and that goes back to me into the bible where it talked about the pharisee and what well, was it a lawyer on the wall saying forgive me father forgive me father i'm a sinner i'm a sinner forgive me and he's like forgive me you know thank you for me not being like him type of i mean there's there's so many different things that that can fall into you know, but the main thing is, and that's one of the things that God doesn't like, doesn't like jealousy. We're supposed to love each other. Dr. Diary, and then Along Mr. Kimmy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pastor Kimmy can go ahead. Okay. Praise God. I just, um, thank you, mommy. Thank you, mommy. I just want to, um, I want to emphasize on the fact that we need to learn to acknowledge our sin at all times, before we make any request to God. When we we need to incorporate it into our, our mode of prayer. So I like the example that Pastor Barry gave. As a matter of fact, growing up too, that was how my mom taught me. And she gave me a five steps of prayer. And people that knows me very well, there's no way I will pray. After I give thanks to God, the next thing is for me to say, Father, let's confess our sins. I'm mm -hmm. kind of like used to it. And that same thing I, I, I taught my kids. And that's what I've been telling them. The first thing you do, give thanks to God. The mm -hmm. second thing you do, confess your sin and acknowledge your sin, knowing that you are a sinner then you can now make a request then you now give thanks again for what he has done and for what he will do for answering your prayers praise the lord so what because the, the, the my favorite part in the bible is when it says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination before god and when you are a sinner there's no point praying and if you don't acknowledge your your sin there's no you are just wasting your time and that is why most of us when we just say well i've been praying i've been praying it looks like god does not answer my prayer he only answer your prayer then like the bible says it said examine yourself why is it that your prayer has not been answered you are just you are just asking and asking you are not acknowledging where you've missed it so that is the thing that i want to really emphasize tonight let's incorporate um, confession into our prayer prayer life. When we pray, confess, and acknowledge your sin. Even if you don't know it, just ask God to forgive you and have mercy because you never know. The one that thinks he's very strong, the Bible says you be very careful. Praise the Lord. So Amen. that's one thing I want to you, I want to emphasize tonight. Let's incorporate confession into our prayer life into our daily living the way every time you you recognize something your mind struck your mind and that is why when it was they were uh, the, they were asking them um, asking Jesus the um, the disciples they were asking him how to how do we pray and he mm. says to them very given he said our father in heaven our Lord be thy name so you give thanks to him he said that kingdom come and that will be done on us. Give us this, this and forgive us. So that means it's recognizing that we are a sinner. Praise the Lord. So don't, 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 don't lie to yourself that you are the perfect person. We are mm -hmm. all a sin. I've come short the glory of God. So let's mm -hmm. recognize that. And I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I said, I want to emphasize that. Let's incorporate confession into our prayer line. I mean, Amen. our prayer life. And God Almighty, we answer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And that's why we see Isaiah 30 and verse 18. You know, at times we feel, will God forgive this sin? Maybe let me just sleep over it. 
but you can see the joy of the father when the son returns. That's the joy. And God, God, God is more joyful. He's more happy when he sees you return to him. He's, you, know, you can imagine how happy God is when you return to him. That's why returning to him for us should be the priority, to return to him. Like we saw, walk in the light. Now, he says in uh, uh, Isaiah says, 30 verse 18, therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, to be gracious to you. And therefore he exalts himself to show you mercy, to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. He's a just God. He's not a man that you'll go to him and, it, and it, it, he keeps reminding you or warning you, oh, this is the last time. This is the last, last of the last time. Next time you try this again. Oh, no, no, I've been warning you. So, you know, a man will put you on toast until you even don't, you're not sure that he forgave you or he just gave you a warning, a last warning, you know? But God will, will because of his grace, he, will, he forgives you and he tells you now, walk according to my, to, my, to my word. This is the way to go, you know? And that's why if you put your trust on man, oh, I'll, I'll go to the, to the priest. The priest will tell me my sins are forgiven. He'll tell you your sins are forgiven. You need to, <laughs> and let me talk about uh, denominations now. The, the Holy Spirit is trying to lead you in a different way. So God, our God wants us to, to go to him and not to, to, to uh, you know, to, not, and not to keep our sins, in, you know, to ourselves. And uh, assuming, I don't need to confess this. Let me just kiss. Maybe God didn't even see me do it anyway. Let me just keep quiet. No. We need to confess and tell God, I am a sinner. I sinned and I ask, I ask forgiveness. And, and, and we see uh, David in Psalm 34, verse 15, he says, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. Now, you can see the benefit of being righteous. You see the benefit of you reconciling, to your, you know, allowing God to reconcile you to himself through Jesus Christ. You can see the benefit of you going back with him. You know, he hears the righteous. His ears are, are leaned toward you. He, he, his ears are wide open because he, he, he can see that you want to let go every, you know, sinful nature, every sin. You want to, 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 to walk in the light. You want to be holy because he is holy. You are, you are seeking for his face. So, his ears are on you because what else is God hearing? What else, what else interests him apart from somebody who is seeking for him? Jeremiah 33 says, 33 verse 3 says, if you seek for him, he will show you great and unsearchable things. So he's waiting for someone to seek for him. So how do you seek for him? By first returning to him, always returning to him. When you turn to him, that's when you're able now to seek for him because his, his mercies and grace are sufficient. Praise the living God. Um, before we get to the final uh, contribution from the team, temptations will find a way into our lives somehow. It will always find a way into our lives. And so this chapter of today was to be as a warning, mostly to, uh, you know, new disciples and, and new believers. When you, you told, when you come to Christ, you get everything. Everything will be good. Everything will be smooth. So just come to Christ and you get a job, you get a wife, you get a good husband. So when you get there, you realize you're now again into the waiting boat. So it's a, your mind first get tempted. What is happening? You know, should I, should I just go back to where I came from? So it is important for us to be alert, both new believers and uh, those who have been there for, for some time, because every day is a new day with a new grace. So the temptation lies ahead. Strap on that armor of God, arm yourself with the word and spirit of God, and go do the battle. The battle is the Lord's. Why is it the Lord's and you're facing it physically? You're facing it because already the Lord has won it. Jesus said in, in John 16, 33, I've already overcome the world, but the battle is ahead. So why, I know somebody is saying, if it's ahead, why should I even go, why should I even uh, take this route? This is a route of victory. You are an overcomer. Praise the Lord. Any more contributions before I bring in, I bring in our senior pastor? Any contribution? Yeah, I wanted to uh, add yes, something. Okay. Um, like we, the way we say, we explain that we should confess our sins before we pray. Okay. 
Okay, it's a good thing that we know that when we when we confess our sin and forsake, there is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is God. That's whom God is. But we don't uh, take grace for granted and mm-hmm. say because after all, when I ask for forgiveness of sin, God said he'll forgive us. And then to purposely, you know, put yourself in a temptation, the things that will make you to sin. We should not just allow sin, like Paul said. Will I allow the grace of God, you know, to let the grace of God be for nothing? Take advantage of the grace of God. You know, we should not purposely sin. Bible says we should abstain from all appearances of evil. We should, we are like, we are striving. You know, it's hard with the way uh, to live a righteous life, but through the grace of God, God will see us through. So we should not put ourselves, have that mindset. Like anyway, God said he will forgive us. So I can go ahead and do this at any time. You know, Bible says we should walk in holiness. We should walk in, into perfection. Walk in, into perfection. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Okay, I'll bring in our senior pastor as you, you think about the question of contribution to bring in later. Uh, I thought Dr. Uh, Banigo wanted to say something when you deferred to Mama. Oh, I thought she, she, she you, came you on. Lost, you know, you know in, 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 in Parliament, when you were given time, you give it to your brother <laughs> Honorable. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, sorry, yeah. So I wanted to, my contribution was that um, um, God loves every soul. Mm. So every soul is, is important. Um, hence, Christ said that um, he, a sick person needs a physician. People who are well, have the rare need for a physician. And he came to call the righteous to repentance. Mm. But that does not mean that uh, we who, folks who are doing the right things should continue to do right. Um, but attention is paid to those who, um, who from the Bible, using the Bible's words, who are lost and who are experiencing things. So when they return to the fold, their soul is important. Uh, so every soul is, is important um, before God. I just wanted to add that. I would uh, stop it there because of time. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you, Pastor Perry. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I'm very glad that we, we've been able to go through these uh, studies uh, this month. Um, discipleship, obedience, fellowship, temptation. Because these are all important um, aspects of our of our work with God here as our disciples. Uh, but I will not fail to chip in to what was discussed today uh, regarding the issue of uh, asking for forgiveness. Because I don't li- I, I wouldn't want us to live here with a with a religiosity uh, impression. You know, people have turned the issue of asking for forgiveness to a religious, uh, a religious exercise. And what do I mean by that? I, Jesus said, okay, our father is asking heaven. People are taking that as a literary prayer but it is not a literary prayer. It is a protocol of prayer. If you want to pray, these are the protocols that you need to follow. What do I mean by religiosity or religious act? When you go to God for forgiveness, you must, forgiveness is not complete without repentance and if you do not know what you are asking God to forgive you for I don't know how you'll be able to repent but people go there okay if I've seen 
I will not sin, please forgive me. I believe that is a religious prayer that does not go anywhere. Because the next minute you're gonna still do the same thing and you will not even know what you did wrong. A, a time of uh, prayer of forgiveness is a, is, a, is a solemn time with God. It's a time in which you have to be open with yourself and know exactly this is what I have sinned. This is my sin before God. This is where I need help. Forgive me, and you repent and say, I will not do it again. I will not do it again. You know, you know, you didn't want to mention religion, but Catholic, uh, Catholicism is has given people that uh sense. Okay, just come every Sunday or every Saturday, ask for Father, forgive me for my sins, for the ones I didn't remember, for the one I did not remember. And the next Saturday is coming back to say the same prayers all over again. That is the act of religiosity. Is when God says we be holy, you can pursue holiness. And doing it, having a sense of sin does not make you holy at all times. And that also gives the sense that, okay, every time you come before, you just need to come and ask for forgiveness. You don't even need to remember what you, what you, the sins you made or what you did. Just, you know, just come each time, start your prayer with forgiveness and that is okay. It is not okay. Is it good to pray for forgiveness? Yes, it is good. But we cannot be casual about it and just make it a routine of prayer without having a sense and a depth of the import of what you are doing and the, what you have done and the need for you to forsake it. Because if you continue to do the same thing every day, every, every day you go into prayer, your grandparents, they were doing it as a religious stuff. You know, it, it has become like a religious uh, activity that does not really carry the import that it should carry. So we can do better. Is it, is it, you know, uh, is it possible to live without sin? I don't know. It may be, it may not be. Is the grace available? It, it could be, it could not be, but Jesus was, was Jesus able to live here on earth Without sin, yes, it was. In Hebrews, we read that in Hebrews chapter four, verse uh, fourteen to sixteen. He was he, he was in all form tempted, but yet without sin. But we are still a work in progress. We are working it, but at the same time, as we walk that walk, we should not take it as a liberty. Don't worry, I'm just going to the next time I'm praying, I'm going to pray for forgiveness of sin, and that is okay. No, it is, it is not the expectation. And when God gave, Jesus gave that prayer uh, uh, protocol, it is not for us to just take it as a, a, a routine of prayer. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't want us to leave this study with that thought in our mind. If you will sin immediately at that point, we are tempted. The reason why that came after temptation is that sometimes we are tempted and we fall to that temptation. And mm -hmm. even though we are meant to resist the temptation, but sometimes we fall. But when we fall, we should be quick to go to God and ask for forgiveness. Lord, I have failed. I have lost. I have missed it here. Be quick. God will forgive us. But don't just take it as a prayer routine. I wouldn't encourage us to do that. That, okay, I don't even remember what I did. It's okay, but I think I must have seen somehow. That is how we carry a sin 
mentality. We must walk towards having a righteousness mentality. Otherwise, we will continue in our sin and will not be able to know the difference. Could we sin? Yes. Should we ask for forgiveness? Absolutely. But don't just do it blindly and believe, okay, otherwise you are not a Christian. Let's be strict about it. Otherwise, you are not, you are not yet giving your life. You are not yet born again. You need to born, get born again and allow the spirit of God to work in you. And uh, so that you, so because each time you sin, you should know. It's not something that you say, oh, if I have sinned or I did not sin, just forgive me. No, it is not as Christian born again spirit field disciple of Christ, no, that is not what God has called us to do. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, 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 a journey, it's a pursuit that we pursue with everything that we have. And I know that the grace of God is available. The grace of God is available to keep us and for us to resist the temptation. The grace is not for us to go and sin. No, because Jesus said, all the law is meant, is, is, he has come to fulfill the law, not to break them. So the grace is to help us to fulfill the law and not to succumb. But if for any reason, because we still manifest flesh, we still manifest flesh while we are here, then we should be quick to seek forgiveness, to recognize it and to seek it. But don't give yourself a blanket uh, covering and say, okay, uh, whatever sin, known sin or unknown sin, forgive me and each time you pray, known sin or unknown sin, then you just continue to do it. It doesn't really matter because you've already, it's already covered. No, uh, that, that is not what God has called us to do. And God will help us, God will continue to engrace us and will equip us so that we will continue to live and walk before him uh, in a way that is um, according to his will and call upon us in the name of Jesus. God, God bless us. It is well with us. And I believe uh, it's been a great one hour, 15 minutes. Thank everyone. Everyone joined in very early today. I give everybody a good, uh, a good clap for that. And um, uh, how I wish we can all meet again by 9 p.m. for the crossover service. And God bless us and give you the grace. If you can, please do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If, if Pastor Sophie is there, please uh, say a word and pray close for us. Uh, she, she just walked away with JJ right now. Okay, good. So, um, Mama, Mommy Kemi, please. Close for us, please. Father, we thank you for, for this gathering. We thank you for the wisdom that you have given unto us. Holy Spirit, we bless your name. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. We thank you because you will not put something that is bigger than us. Almighty God, we ask you, O oh Lord, the Bible says, it says to pursue holiness. And Father, we pray that the grace to continue to live according to your will. Father, we pray and bestow unto every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask you, oh Lord, this day that we want to continue to dwell in you, we want to be able to stand straight. Father, we pray that every time, whenever the temptation comes, Father, 
give us the enablement to be able to pursue it and give us power and strength to be able to overcome it through our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we pray this day as we go, your spirit will not leave us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we go and come back tonight, King of glory, enable us to make it there safely Amen. and to even learn more of you as we seek more of you, more of your power, more of your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Think everlasting Father, King of glory, we commit everyone that could not make it tonight to your holy end, that Father, you will reach out to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And we don't want to be just the heir of the world alone. We want to be the doer of your word, Father. Help us, Holy Spirit, because we cannot do it alone and we cannot do it by ourselves. King of glory, we reach out to your help and we know that as many that's willing, King of glory, you will reach out to them even more in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all and God Amen. bless. Amen. See you tonight and also on Wednesday and next Sunday too. God bless you.